The technology that's going into power stations is improving greatly, resulting in smaller units with more storage capacity and more output power. One of the leading power stations in that regard is this one, the Anchor Solix C1000. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Anchor Solix for sending out the C1000 so that I can share it with you. So, you know, Anchor has been in this business for a long time. Before they became Anchor Solix, when they were still just Anchor, they were still producing power banks and solar panels. In fact, my very first combination of power bank and solar panel were from Anchor, and I still have them. They're a little bit dated in their technology, but they still work exactly the same way the day that I purchased them. So what I thought I would do with this unit is bring the camera in a little closer. I want to go over the key features for this unit. I want to go over a few of its specifications, but more importantly, we're going to do a number of demonstrations just to show you what this unit is capable of. Now, just before we get into the key features for the Anchor Solix C1000, let me share with you what came with it. So you might expect that you're going to get a warranty booklet and an operating manual, but in fact, what you do get is a warranty booklet but not so much an operating manual as an outline of how to go about getting the operating manual. So you can see there's a QR code on the front of this pamphlet. So you need to scan that and download the operating manual. And you'll want to do that anyway, because you also get access to the Anchor Solix Bluetooth app for getting, gaining access to the features. And so you can make operating changes for the device. So put those aside. Of course, you do expect to get an AC charging cable. I'll show you how that operates in a few moments time. But the first thing that I noted about this is that it is a heavier gauge wire than any of the AC charging cables that I've received with other power stations. And after giving some thought to it, I understood the reason why. This unit charges at an extremely high speed, very, very quick recharge capabilities. And that, of course, means that it's pulling extra power or a lot more power than other power stations might in order to accomplish that. You need the heavier gauge cable in order for that to be safe and not overheat the cables. You also get a DC charging cable for your automobile so that the uh, plug for your cigarette lighter on your automobile and the XT60 which is the DC connection for the Anchor Solex as you might expect as well very common. You get one more cable and I was a little confused by this. This is their solar panel connecting cable. Now what confused me is well to start with there's your XT60 plug in for the Anchor Solex as you might expect but what confused me was there was two more you can see the cable splits and there are two more XT60 connections and I couldn't understand how this is going to work because I think virtually every other uh, solar panel that I have has MC4 connectors. So I went to the company website and looked at their solar panels and yes, their 100 watt and 200 watt solar panels actually have MC, or not MC4, sorry, XT60, not the traditional MC4 connectors. It's not proprietary because those, cable, those connectors are very common. It's just I have not seen other solar panels with those connectors uh, provided for it. I, that's not a bad thing necessarily necessarily because if you're buying the anchor uh, Solix solar panels to go with this, then you have the cable ready to go with it. All right, let's just go through the key features and talk about what's so um, why they make this this device so incredible. So to start with, right off of the top, this is using, as you would expect of any high quality power station today, the lithium iron phosphate battery technology, not the li older lithium ion. If you have a choice, and you you should, there's lots of choice on the market now, stay away from lithium-ion batteries. They have a shorter operating life, and they have a small risk of igniting fires. There has been some history of that. I've never witnessed it myself, and it's very low likelihood, but they have more of a risk. They're less stable than the lithium-iron phosphate used in all high-end batteries today. They are much more stable, and they have many, many more times the um, shelf life or the operating life. In fact, on a regular daily use of this device, you can expect it to last 10 years before it even starts to drop any of its storage capability. I think that's pretty impressive. Daily use, 10 years. So if you're using it not on a daily basis, you can expect this to last a lot longer, of course. Now, this is expandable. You can get an additional expansion battery to go with this device 
and double its capability. Its capability in-house is, is 1,056 watt hours. So that's quite a bit of power all by itself, especially for the size of the device. But 1,056 watt hours is only gonna last so long. So if you want to increase the amount of capacity that you can have with this unit, you can get the expansion battery and double that to 2,112 watt hours. And of course, rather than having to pay the full price of another unit like this, you're only paying a, not a fraction of the price, probably two thirds the price to get the expansion battery. That's a good option. And that is something that is pretty much cutting edge. Most of the major manufacturers are realizing that it's great to have that expansion capabilities built into their devices. Now, here's where things really start to get interesting. The AC inverter, the output output for all of your AC devices, this will, will put out up to 1800 watts of pure sine wave AC energy. Now, why is that so important? Well, the Pure sine wave is standard technology. Again, I think pretty much every power station has that. That is absolutely uh, required for any device that you're going to be operating off this that has a motor. Things like microwaves or even fans, they have to have pure sine wave. And also, also critically important, are medical devices like a CPAP machine. You don't want anything other than pure sine wave output operating or using those devices on anything other than a pure sine wave output. 1800 watts is a great amount of power to output. A lot of the power stations I have don't even come close. Some of the ones that I have this size and even a little bit larger don't exceed a thousand watts. Now, why is that so important? Well, as you see, when we get around and do some demonstrations with this today, you're going to find that a lot of the devices you have around your home and things like even a microwave, honestly, even a microwave, I don't know how often I would want to or find myself in a need to use a microwave in a power outage, but you can use it with this device. And a lot of the microwaves you cannot use with other devices because they don't have the uh, output for it. And again, in demonstration, you'll see how that is a real benefit, of course. But not only does it have the 1800 watt pure sine wave output, it also has a surge capacity of 2400 watts. Now, the Anchor Solix refers to their surge capacity as surge pad, and that's great. And actually, there is one port specifically designated on this for surge pad. It says so right underneath the port, it is your A traditional three-prong AC output port, but this one is as associated with a 25 amp fuse inside. Now, it does have the six AC outputs, so you can combine up to 1800 watts with using, well, all outputs, of course, up to 1800 watts output. But if you want to use it with a device that requires an even higher output, like up to 2400 watts, it, although the manual doesn't say, it only makes sense that this would be the output port that you would use. Now, what is, now there is some caveats. Yeah, we do need to talk about this as well. Yes, you can output 2400 watts, but it is for a specific type of load. They call it the resistive load, things like heating elements. It doesn't work well with anything that has motors. So if you have a consistent resistive load, not something like a motor that has a variable load, then you can use up, you can output to up to 2400 watts. Now, it also has hyperflash and that's what Anchor Solar is, is, is referring to their input uh, capabilities. So you can go from a zero to 100% full battery, not zero to 80% like a lot of the manufacturers, but zero to 100% a full battery in 58 minutes. That's just incredible speed. I don't have another device that is capable of being recharged that quickly. Now, here's another caveat. Yes, you can do that. You can actually increase the speed up to, the, or bring the time down to 58 minutes, but it's not recommended you do that on a regular basis because that does put extra strain on the batteries. In fact, the slower you can charge the batteries, the longer their lifespan is. So there is, you can control how fast the batteries in the Bluetooth app, you can control how fast the batteries will charge and how long it will take to charge them at the same time. But you can, if you have a real need to get up to full power quickly, you can do that with this. It will also accept 
600 watts of solar input. So uh, I don't have that many solar panels in my possession right now to test and see if I can get a full 600 watts in this. But if you have a combination of, of uh, three 200 watt panels that you want to put in series or parallel, well, that's another discussion for a different uh, day, then you can do that and get 600 watts of input. Now I mentioned it does have a Bluetooth app and I'll demonstrate how that operates in a few moments time, but it really does control a lot of it features is well laid out, easily accessible, very intuitive to use. And finally, of course, when you're buying something like this and you're investing a good amount of money, you want to know what is the warranty. Well, it is a five year warranty on this. And as Anchor promises a 10 year lifespan as well. And of course, we know that that's on daily use. If you're using it less than every day, then you can expect an even longer lifespan. All right, I'm going to be putting all of the physical and performance specifications in the video description for your reference, but I'll touch on a few of those right now. And let's just go through the physical specifications. So dimensions wise, it is 14.8 inches in this direction. It is 10.5 inches top to bottom and 8.07 inches front to back. It comes in at 28.44 pounds. I'm going to tell you, this is smaller and lighter than any other power station I have that even approaches the capability of this one. Now what I want to do is just go through some of the ports and uh, the operation of this device and then we'll get to doing the description. So right off of the top, the one right here, and this is important to me and uh, you know every device still carries it of course, is this is the 12 volt 10 amp DC output and the traditional cigarette port or cigarette lighter port we'll call it I guess, or sometimes it's called an auto output port. In any case, this is what I would use for powering my 12 volt refrigerator when I go camping. That's why I say it's important to me, of course. Now, as far as other DC outputs, all it has is the four USB ports right here. So it has two USB type C PD or fast charge ports, one delivering 100 watts of power and the other one delivering 30 watts of power. And then it has two of the more traditional USB type A uh, type A outputs as well. Now, I one feature that I didn't mention a minute ago about this unit, which can be critically important if it's something that you're looking for, is that the Anchor Solix C1000 can operate it as a UPS or uninterruptible power supply. It has a very quick response time of 20 milliseconds or less. In fact, I've tested this with my computer. So plug the computer into the front of the device. Of course, the device is turned on. It is then plugged into the wall. And what I did for a test is just unplugged it from the wall to simulate a power failure and there was not even a flicker on the computer. Now that's not as important as if it was a medical device but rest assured if you have a medical device like a CPAP machine that you're not going to have a failure during a power failure. It's going to continue to operate just perfectly. Now let's just go through a few of the other ports right off of the front. You can see and I mentioned this a minute ago there are six AC output ports ports and you can combine up to 1800 watts of output or any one of them and I mentioned the surge pad, surge pad port on this end you can power things up to the um, higher uh, current levels if you need to. Now I'm going to turn the, U well let, actually let's just work our way around and show you the rest of the ports on it. So what do we have here? Of course we have the XT60 input. This is your DC input port for solar panel or from your car power, uh, if you're powering it off the uh, 12 volt uh, output port in your vehicle of course. And here you have the um, AC input that matches the cord and a reset button. So it's like a, 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 re, a fuse reset, if you will. A tr if it trips, then you can press that. Um, and on the other end, this huge port right here, this is the expansion port where you would include your expansion cable to go to the expansion battery as well. So that's what that is. Now let's power the device up. So we have the on off button, nice, clear, easy to find with the blue around it. Press and hold and the station will power up. 
see it going through a few self-checks. Now, as far as the information that the is demonstrated or displayed on the screen, by the way, the screen or the screen intensity can be changed from three levels as well. I actually have it set at the higher level right now, just to make it easier for it to show up on camera. But you can see I have a percentage of the battery left. So I, right now it's reading 68%. It will also show you the input and the output, as you would expect, as well as the time remaining on output. So how long is this battery or this power station going to last at the loads that you're running it at? It'll display that for you. If it's input and you're charging it, it will tell you how long until it's fully charged. Also a nice feature. I will say, however, they're a little small. So once we get this in demonstration, I'll show, you'll be able to see that. You can see them, but they're not as clearly displayed or as large a display as they can be on some of the other power stations that I own. Just the same, all the information is there. The other thing that you're gonna see is probably flashing right now, right up here in the corner, is that it has its automatically turns on its Bluetooth indicator. And so right now it's ready for my phone to connect to this so that I can use the uh, Bluetooth app to do the controls on it as well. Now, the other thing that it has in terms of a feature is something that has come and gone on power stations over time, and that is a light. Now, some of the earlier power stations I own had lights on them, and what I found about them is they were like flashlights. They were small, they uh, really cast a bright uh, glaring light, and they didn't seem to you know, provide a whole lot of utility or functionality. And then that went away and I did, for a while power stations came without lights, and it was realized that the light actually does have value on a power station, and where it should be is exactly where this one is, which is right in front, because if you're using this to power something during a power failure, you need to be able to see what you're doing, and this does a good job of it. Now, the button to operate it is right here. So we press and turn it on, and you can just run yourself through the three light levels and turn it off. It, you notice it did not go to flashing like a lot of them do. If you really want the flashing uh, light on this, you double tap the power button, which I, I won't do to you right now, of course, and then we can turn it off. All right, on and off. There we go. Okay, so those are all the ports and the features on this. I think the next thing to do is to get it and set up a few devices and show you the power draw that they have. A couple of things before we get started with the demonstrations. First off, I'm not going to show you everything that I tested with the Anchor Solix C1000. I have a few items here just for demonstration purposes. I will tell you about the things I did test it with because I think that'll be important. Before we even get to that though, let's talk about purchasing a power station and whether or not the Anchor Solix C1000 is the right one for you. So if you have not purchased a power station for yourself before, there's a bit of an exercise you need to go through and in order to determine what is the right size and whether or not this is the right one for you to start with. What is it you're going to be using your power station for? Now, if all you want the power station for is things like recharging your phone or your tablets or maybe that, uh, your cameras or your drones or that type of thing, this is much more powerful, much larger than you'll ever need for that purpose. Even if all you want it for is running your computer or your TV during a power failure, again, it is more than you need. Although the extended run time, especially with the expansion battery, will allow you to run those much longer than some devices, it still has more capability than you'll need for that purpose. So the idea for you to do, or the exercise for you to go through, is deciding what is important for you. So for me, there's a couple of items that are critically important that I know I have the capability to power, especially in an extended power failure. Number one is, are my refrigerator here in the kitchen and my freezer in the basement. I'll tell you now, I've tested both of them, and as I expected, this device will run them easily for a period of time. They both draw power, and they will both eventually run out, but they'll run them for a number of hours. Hopefully, the power comes back on before the battery runs out. The other thing that's important for me is during the winter time that I can power my oil-fired uh, forced hot air furnace. Now, I do have mini split heat pumps on the house. So they just got added a couple years ago, but prior to that and still I have my furnace in the basement and it acts as my backup. This device and I don't know of any power station except for maybe the large home style ones will run the mini split heat pumps. 
but I can run quite easily my furnace. It does have a transfer switch so I can plug my furnace into this device and it will run because really it's a fan and a pump. That's all that it has to run on the furnace so that they don't draw all that much power. So those ones are easily covered by this device. After that, it comes into the things that are less critical but really nice to have capable or available to you. And that's what I've got here in the kitchen. So I went around and I looked at all the devices that I have. And now here's the exercise for you. Take a look at the devices that you say are important and look at, there's usually a tag somewhere on that device, which will tell you what the power, the operating wattage is for that device. So um, for instance, if it's an electric kettle that you want for hot water, mine runs at 1300 watts. I just checked the label on it. We'll demonstrate and they'll show you it actually, what it actually does draw. They don't always draw exactly what the label says. But if it's a microwave or uh, an air fryer or a hot plate or an induction burner, check and see what the current draw is on those device and you'll know whether or not this is the right power station. Now remember, you can power things up to 1800 watts in normal time with this and those are things that have motors and the like. And, but other things that are just resistive loads like an induction uh, stove, that can go up to 2400 watts. Now, Let's be clear, it's not going to last a long time. It's going to drain the battery very quickly, but you can power those power hungry devices for at least a period of time. All right, so that's the little discussion I wanted to go through. Now, what I want to do is just show a few of the devices I have here in the kitchen, none of which are critical because I have alternate means of heating food or heating water or making coffee, that type of thing. But it's nice to know that I can run these things at least a number of times before the battery runs down. All right, let's get started. Okay, for this demonstration, uh, I have obviously the Anchor Solix C1000 sitting here on my counter. And next to me, I have four typical kitchen devices, the ones I own, my toaster, my microwave, my kettle, and my coffee maker. And I'll bring each one to the picture one at a time and give you a quick demonstration of them being plugged in. So the other thing I want to do, of course, is show you the Bluetooth app. So we're going to start by powering the power station up and it's still at 68% and up in the corner is the flashing Bluetooth indicator meaning it's ready to connect by Bluetooth so let me just bring that app up and there is the app uh, activated let me bring in a little closer so you can see so you can see it's showing exactly the same as the device itself it's showing at 68% that where DC op or DC input and AC input would be and neither of course are operating right now the USDB devices, it shows each of the ports. You know, it basically reflects the front of the device itself. It shows the car port, the AC output. Now you've got a brightness for the uh, light itself, so I can operate the light on the front of it remotely. I can turn the screen on and off. Now, if I want to do the other things, the, the ones that actually change the capability, then I have some uh, choices here. I can cha uh, change the recharging power, the power which the maximum power at which the Anchor Solix will recharge from AC. And right now it's set at the standard default, which is 1000 watt. I'll tell you, my host won't deliver 1000 watts to this device, but I can change it downwards as well, which is also of use. So if I want to slow the charging down, to uh, give the batteries uh, less stress or strain on them, I can do that from that device right there. And you can see down here, I can scroll through the wattages that it will max out it. And so I just changed it to 200 now. That's not what I'll leave it at, of course. Uh, now, I also have the uh, uh, unit timeout. So you can set this so that it will turn itself off. In other words, stop delivering power after a specific set of time. Now, I have it set at never for the moment, but there is 24, 12, right down to 30 minutes. Now, why would you want to do that? I just set it for 30 minutes. I won't leave it there. Well, if you leave an item plugged in and let it run off of this device and eventually it shuts itself down because it's charged. I don't know what it would be. I'm just thinking of trying to think of an example. 
If the power station remains on, especially if the inverter is turned on and is ready to deliver AC power, the inverter itself will draw power off of the batteries. So if you want to stop it from drawing power off of the batteries and you know just save them for the uh, a longer period of time, then you can set the time that the unit will continue to operate. So that's one of the other part. Now there is also a few more things: uh, the lights, the bright brightness of the screen, screen timeout and the different things all the way down. So all the information you want to know, serial number, even the uh, manual. You can actually download the manual to your phone from the app. So makes it so that you have it right there available to you. So those are the settings. But now what we're going to do is I'll be able to show you as I plug in each device, the power that is drawing will be on the phone as well as on the device itself. So let's start with uh, just an easy one. I'll start by turn it now each of the AC and the DC have a power button of their own to turn on the only one that doesn't have its own power is the USB ports they're on when the device is on so if I want to turn the AC on I press the button and it tells me AC is now available for use the inverter is actually starting to power up so it is drawing power it's not a lot it draws a little bit but if you left it on it did nothing else plug nothing in over time, it would start to draw some of the battery off. So now let me power the, or plug the uh, toaster in from the toaster. Now the toaster, I noted on the bottom on its sticker, it was listed as 900 watts. Let's see what in fact it does. I'll bring the camera in. Immediately, it's telling me it's running at 876 watts. And I can show you that on the phone as well. 876 watts running from the toaster. So that's pretty close to the 900 rated for that device. I'll turn that off. Put it out of the way. Now as soon as I started running that device, the fans turned on inside the anchor solar because of course they've got to cool down the battery, make sure everything remains cool. Next device we'll plug in for demonstration is my electric kettle and this is rated at I think it was 1300 watts. So we'll plug that in, turn the kettle on. It'll take a second for the heating element to run up. Now, it's showing 1,440 watts being drawn. That's getting upwards of the maximum capacity. You can probably hear the fan starting up like a jet engine. It does have a bit of noise to it, but it's not overly annoying, if you know what I mean. So it does that. It'll run. The higher the running, the wattage that's being drawn off of it, the faster the fan will run in order to keep things cool. So the kettle is now running at 1,429 watts. The water's quickly coming to a boil, but let's turn that off. We'll unplug that. Bring my coffee maker over. Now, the coffee maker is as close to an essential as any of the other devices I mentioned before. I have a little bit of water in it. I say that because it's th that's really only true for coffee lovers like myself. So I'll plug my coffee maker in, flip the switch on my Mr. Coffee coffee maker, and it's shown me that it's drawing 900 watts of power in order to put the water through. And that's what it is rated at, is a 900 watt on the bottom of the sticker. And the other thing that I mentioned now is that it's telling me that I have 0.7 of an hour's left of battery capacity if I continue to run it at 900 watts. Now, of course, a pot of uh, water is not going to take that long to run through, but that's the information here. As you can see, it is kind of small. It is there, it is clear, but you have to be fairly close to it in order to see that. All right, we'll turn that, that off, and I have one more device I want to show you. And that, of course, is the microwave. So the microwave, I was not able to turn over to check and see what the rated power draw is on this, but I can tell you that it is listed as an 1100 watt microwave. So that would mean it can deliver 1100 watts of heating power, but it's going to take more than 1100 watts to run the device because of course there are some losses in converting it, but also there's a small motor that runs the table inside. So let's just uh, run it for, or sorry, not that, 37 quick. And we'll see what this is running off of the, off of the power station. Right now it's showing me it's running at 1,574 watts. So 1,574 watts to run an 1,100 watt microwave. 
All right, and we'll just let that run down for the rest of the 30 seconds. Or I can stop it, I guess. And again, you can hear the fan. Now the fan is starting to run back down. All right, those are the items I wanted to demonstrate just to give an idea. A few of the kitchen items that you can run, but there are a few things you need to be aware of that this will not run. I do have one last demonstration I want to show you before we wrap this video up. And just before I do that, uh, I just want to mention something my wife reminded me of. It's not the type of thing I would think about, of course, but uh, Gina reminds me that she can use this to run her hair dryer and her curling iron. And those are both items which will trip a lot of the smaller power stations. So this has plenty, the Anchor Solix C1000 has plenty of power for things like hair dryers and curling irons. But the last demonstration I have is a fan, but this is also a heater fan. So I have used this in fan mode off of this device considerably during this testing period. And I have also tested it in in heater mode. So we're all set up to go. I'm gonna turn it on the low heat mode. And as the powers, the fan powers up, the device starts to power up and right down at the bottom here it tells me it's drawing 876 watts. Now that's with 63% of the battery left it's only going to last 0.7 of an hour which is probably around 35 minutes you know, given a little mental math. But let's turn it up to high. This I don't have another power station which will run this at its high capacity because right now it's drawing 1441 watts. Now it's only going to last me 0.4 of an hour. So we're now we're down to about 25 minutes of runtime on the battery. And as the fan heats up, so does the fan inside of the Anchor Solix C1000 to keep it cool, of course. So it is capable of running a heater fan like this one, uh, which will run at 14 or up to 1500 watts, which could be important during a power failure during the winter. If you have one small area that you need to have a, some heat in, maybe to prevent pipes from freezing, or it is where you're in your home and like in your bedroom, but you want to stay warm, you can still do so with a small heater like this. All right, now we can wrap this video up. All right, so without question, the Anchor Solix C1000 has a lot of capability. It will run a lot of the devices around your home that you're likely to want to have available to you during a power failure. But there are a few things that you need to be aware that it will not run, such as my range, my kitchen range, that of course that runs at a different voltage as well, but it won't run large items like this. So you have to maintain a realistic approach to this in terms of what it is capable of running. And the other thing of course is it only has, I say only, this is still quite a bit of cap capacity, 1152 watts hours of storage, meaning that's the capacity that you have in terms of the battery. Now, yes, again, you can double it with the expansion battery and get twice as much available to you. That's important for how long the device will run, but that is the other half of the equation. First off, what is the device that you're trying to run? What is the power draw for that device? And then you can either do it mathematically or the device will show you, so will the app on the phone, just how long the battery or the power station, the batteries in the power station, will run that device. So, and again, that's all shown you in the display, so it makes it nice and easy. One of the things I learned with power stations, especially better ones like the Anchor Solix, is don't be afraid to do a little bit of experimenting. Look around the home and say, will it run my uh, mix master? Will it run my power tools? Those types of things. First thing I like to do is look at the label on the bottom that tells me what is the energy draw, plug it in and give it a try. If you have a power rating that's strong or more than the power rating that the battery's rated for, it just shuts down. Then you unplug it, press reset, and you're good to go again. So it's not like you're going to hurt the battery by plugging in something that has too much of a draw. It just tells you, shuts down and tells you, no, that's too much. So it's a nice way of going about it, but you can save yourself some time, a little bit of aggravation, if you go through the exercise first of deciding what it is you want to power and then match the power station to your needs. I just put that out there. That's always a good exercise for anyone to get through. All right. That's all I wanted to share with you with on the, uh, the Anchor Solix C1000 power station. There is so much more to it. 
but it's, I didn't want to make this video overly long. So what I'll do instead is open it up to you. What questions do you have? What comments do you have? Put those in the comments section below. As I mentioned, I will be putting all the specifications as well as the links to where you can take another look at the Anchor Solix C1000 in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.